elf bowling PG! Oh, I mean, I know how that one is PG. That makes sense. In fact, how is that not more than PG? But how is the anime movie based on the game PG? Elf Bowling is based on a computer game from the late 90s about Santa throwing a bowling ball at striking elves. A cute idea, I guess. Not really anything that special. So of course it became a big hit! It was spread all throughout the internet and even got picked up by other game consoles, where it was proudly labeled as one of the most enchantingly worst games of all time. Well, the developers must have gotten the idea to do movies because in 2007, Elf Bowling the Movie was released to a very similar response. As the tagline asks, can Christmas be spared? Not with your greedy asses making these films! It's okay though, as the back of the box reads, this beautiful computer graphics movie is perfect for the whole family parental guidance suggested. What are they guiding them on? What elf asses actually look like? There's a lot to get bowled over by, so let's jump right in. Let's take a look at our last Christmas movie of the year! This is... Elf Bowling. Ho ho ho! So you think you know how Santa Claus became Father Christmas, eh? He traveled from America to Britain? Well, think again. Okay! Two points for not starting off in any way how I thought this film would start off! Who am I kidding? If this was a Disney film, it'd be Alice and the Curse of the Black Coal! This ship is called the Filthy Toe, and they hold the evilest of pirates known to man, the ones who steal toys and sell them for profit. We steal toys and sell them back to the So that's what happened to the SS Toys R Us. Put all them crates of stolen toys in me cabin, and make it snappy, ya barnacle butts! What did Bizarro Captain Crunch just say? Make it snappy, ya barnacle butts! Okay. I don't know what the rest of the film is gonna give me, but I thank it for adding barnacle butts to my dictionary of obscurely confusing insults. I'll put it next to an oldie but a goodie. We get our first major dilemma this movie puts forth to us. Who pooped in a peanut barrel? Who pooped in the peanut barrel? Ah! Barnacle butts and pooping in peanut barrels. I have to give the film credit for setting the bar so low, even a Nat Quinn limbo under it. Deliver to the poor wee one's orphanage. So Santa sends some of his toys to an orphanage, and I'm already confused. Oh, me little ones, I owes you this and much, much more for what me and me brother stole o'er the years. Me motivation flips more than HGTV's fall lineup. In his off time, Captain Santa non-surprisingly enjoys bowling, but the crew finds out he's been scamming them out of money by telling his half-brother Dingle to rig the score. So they're tossed overboard. Meanwhile, in the North Pole, we see one of the elves skiing. Clearly stoned out of his mind. Yaha! <laughs> Blinkings for sobers! He finds the two frozen pirates washed up on the hill. The ocean has a really good arm. And all the elves gather around to do various impressions of Rupert Everett's career. They look like hairy monsters to me. Don't worry, Candle. He's the great white beard. Lex, what the dingle bobs are they? And what are you gonna do with them? Thaw them out. By asking Xandar. Never thaw out monsters. Oldest rule in the book. Well, stand back. Cause I'm rewriting the book. By Silver Surfer's left nut, I command you to thaw! Who be you, sniveling pipsqueaks? At first, the pirates want to attack, but Santa gets an idea. Ah! I love you. What is this place? It's the North Pole. Welcome to you and your pet rat, Whitebeard. That rat is me half-brother, Dingle, to whom I'm bound forever by blood. Well, I find that's true for most Dingles. The two of them express their thanks to the elves and lie about them being pirates. You two wouldn't be pirates now, would ya? Pirates? <laughs> what gives you that idea? We're just Packers fans! <laughs> They're shown the North Pole, and I'll admit the main workshop is actually a pretty unique design, as they explain that a lot of their productivity is very magic ball oriented. If I had me that mystic ball, I could steal every toy from here to Timbuktu. <laughs> Maybe I could even get skin not made out of Play-Doh. But what do the elves do with the toys if they don't deliver them to kids? We play with them. And then store them in that mountain over there. Like I said, clearly stoned off their asses! But the elves start marching towards them in anger, and Santa and Dingle think they're on to them and try throwing a ball at them. Yeah! Oh, so they weren't on to them. They were just showing off their angry march exercise to the newcomers. You know, if you was an NRA Santa, you'd all be bloody fruitcake! 
Santa explains he was just playing his favorite game, Elf Bowling. Uh, me favorite game, lad. <laughs> bowling. Uh, elf bowling, that is. <laughs> Pretty lame connection, considering the game already had a very laid out story, but your five-year-old's already drunk on eggnog from watching this, so who's complaining? What are they doing? It's a surefire sign they like you, Whitebeard. The honorary shit-throwing to follow is also a sign of high flattery. They have their best chef make Santa a strudel, but there's another cream-filled pastry both of them seem to be thinking about. Rather you keep your hot strudel in your pants. Now, now we know where the PG came from. Christ, Elf Bowling! You know, a little something for the adults. Because clearly a lot of grown-ups will be watching a film with armpit farts in it. Who am I kidding? If this was a hit, that's totally possible. Psst. Hey, buddy. What do you want? Can I interest you in some hot mittens? They just fell off the truck. Oh, why? I haven't seen a character so smoothly introduced since I found out about Katana's back-having abilities. He's got my back. The elves think Santa is a prophet called Whitebeard who will show them their destiny. You can give away the toys we make to children every day of the week. Nah, too much work. How about you just give them the toys on one special day of the year? Semi-leaning on their religious upbringing, Creasters still get a pass. Santa agrees and they give him a magic hat that clearly didn't get his measurements ahead of time. It's fine, as long as he doesn't put on any weight. He's introduced to all the different elves who will help him make the gifts. First, there's Rappel, who's in charge of packaging. Yo, yo, when the presents need wrapping, I'm the one makes it happen. My feet start tapping my Oh god, I'm having Rap City Street Kids flashbacks. Hide all your Walter Joneses! After he's introduced to everybody, one of the elves gives him a bit of advice. Elves need to be happy. Their hearts must bring with joy. Oh, thank god, it's a musical. The elf who is able to make toys. I bet Amazon sings this song every day. Some people become different when money's involved. They that's the Amazon anthem. And everything sucks, and we can't do our work, and everything is miserable and terrible and terrible. And you know, it's funny there's a song about not being all about the money in a movie version of ELF BOWLING! No, really, we wanted to tell this story for the art. Strudel dick jokes must blossom. Are they screeching at his voice or his Muppet Ghost of Christmas present wearing the Burger King skin as a face mask? I'm not sure if he's dropping off presents or multicolored diarrhea, but the elves are so happy at his work that they make Santa and his brother live forever. By the way, anyone else notice this kid's film has kind of a sick sense of humor? Which I'd be fine with if most of the jokes weren't this. These go together like peanut butter and peanut allergies. Dingle, on the other hand, kept trying to scheme people for eons and eons, and Santa kept having to bail him out. You know, after literally hundreds of years of this, would you revoke his immortality card? <laughs> Santa ends up marrying the chef, who it looks like is fed up with her brother leeching off them. That's it! It's either my strudel or death with noodle. Did she say it's either my strudel or death with noodle? It's either my strudel or death with noodle. With food having so many double entendres in this, I don't want to know what that means. You've been sleeping on me couch for 600 years. You got one week to find yourself a nice bachelor igloo. Might I suggest not picking the one from North. They get their Kathy Bateses to do some risque things. Dingo calls upon his two hench penguins to hatch a plan. Because this time, Santa ain't coming to town. <laughs> Might I also add, oh! So Santa continues to do his elf bowling. Hey, you gotta justify that title somehow. When one of the elves says their toy count is off by six billion units. I'm challenging my belly full of blubber brother to bowl for Christmas. Winner takes all! <laughs> that makes about as much sense as dueling to be the head of government. Where's our push for Academy Awards? So it's a duel for all the marbles, is it? Strange he's been living here hundreds of years, yet he never lost his pirate accent. Do kids really want to think of Santa as the guy who opened Spongebob? By the way, if you read this version, that has a very different meaning. I accept! Let's go! Hold on to your ah! armpits, it's time for... Bowling for Christmas! 
Whoever wins gives birth to baby Jesus. Where does he factor in in all this? Well, Rabble, whoever wins this match of all matches becomes the big kahuna of Christmas. That's right, Lex. And the stands are filling with fans. Hey, who are we televising to? The voice is in my head. Mine too. Santa's having a beef with his manager, and Dingle's having a problem with his warm-up. <laughs> well, at least we know the writers of Vampire Suck are still getting work. Santa and Dingle will bowl one ball, winner, Takes all. It's like that Super Bowl where one touchdown wins. The movie's called Elf Bowling. We can't actually focus that much on Elf Bowling in it. The Penguins replaced two of the elves as part of their plan to cheat. <laughs> Dingle seems to be stretching his neck in a terrifying nature I can only assume came from Satan, Prince of Darkness. Oh yeah, that's definitely Beelzebub. <laughs> Too bad those pins can't talk and say what happened. Wait, those pins should talk and say what happened. The penguins cheat again, making it look like Santa lost. Well, I, I guess you beat me, Dingle. Please don't use the phrase beat me, Dingle, again. But it's revealed he cheated and Santa ends up winning. So, I guess that's it for the movie. Oh, wait, there's still 40 minutes left. Joy. Are there any questions? Hey, look, boss, I can do your mom. You know exactly what you said. Oh yay, another song. I love a mutiny, backstabbing betrayal, yeah, that's for me. If I pretend this isn't needles in my ball sack, will you end faster? Just for that, another verse! No! Christmas is in two weeks and we're still short six billion toys. Oh, you swabs are killing me. Just cross the who's off the list. They're kind of odd, they probably won't mind. The penguins sabotage the machines, and the head elf gets blamed for it. First you lose count to the toys, then you short the machines. Now you blast me, girlfriend Strudel! Hey, she came on to me! I mean, uh, I didn't do any of that. The head elf quits after being insulted, but Dingle tells Santa he ran out onto the ice and needs to be saved. Santa finds out he's been fooled, and the machine at the workshop has a few, um, hiccups. Remember always that my favorite movie was Home Alone. Yeah, then things got awkward when they posted the Mission Accomplished banner. Dingle makes it look like Santa betrayed them and the elves go on strike. Dingle suggests, or rather, sings about a new spot they should head to. Elves have never sailed the seven seas. Okay, the music is clearly accompanying a different song, and how is it every movie I've reviewed this December is a musical by people who can't music? They agree to go to Fiji, and on the fly, one of the passengers hears that Dingle will probably become a millionaire. How about you set up your new workshop at my personal resort in Fiji? As you can tell, she clearly needs to marry into money. She gives him a spot to make the toys, and... Ula, ula, Fiji is a Does every fart have to have a song attached to it? You know what doesn't have a song in this? Elf Bowling, the name of the goddamn movie, and apparently what the story is about! But everything is so forced and impractical, you're probably reenacting Edvard Munch's Christmas card here. heart literally melts the ice. Though let's be honest, something else probably broke through first. Thus Santa and his wife are reunited. Dingle, you better watch out, you surly clown. Cause Santa Claus is coming to town! With a machete and a lot of garbage bags! Dingle rebuilds the place as a sweatshop where he hypnotizes the elves to make the toys against their will. Yeah, well Santa's in the frozen food aisle. And you're about to check out! Price check on minced elf meat. <laughs> I got this cash register just for that joke. I like wasting my spare time. Dingle steals the orb and zaps the elf with it, which calls for, what else? Another goddamn song. Slavery makes the world go round. I'm immediately uncomfortable with this one, so I'm just skipping it. Santa tries to stop them, but Dingle uses the orb to make stone bodyguards and bury Santa in the sand. Santa! What are you doing here? An impression of Ted Danson from Creepshow. What do you think I'm doing? He gets him free, and the chief of the island uses his music to... I guess make a lady in the fire. Nothing surprises me anymore. Awesome booty. 
like pie. To get inside and snap the elves out of their hypnosis by just spinning the wheel the other way. Now I have to admit that's a little funny. Dingle tricked us. He wrote that letter, not Santa. <gasps> I trusted that guy who literally had hundreds of years of crimes under his belt. Let's get him, elves! This time our angry march is actually because we're angry. Doing things for reasons feels good. Santa chases his brother while his wife and the owner of the resort... Well, I'm just gonna take a wild guess and say they're not above a cat fight. Be a cat fight! She puts her strudel in her mouth. At this point, I don't care how you take that. While the head elf uses his sudden magical powers to get the orb to shock Dingle. So, now what? I'm making a second public challenge. I propose Santa and me bowl for Christmas again. Ah, I see what you did there. You did horribly and wasted the time of everybody involved, but I see what you did there. So they do elf bowling again, and once again, Dingle tries to cheat. Christ, does every game need James Randy to oversee it? <laughs> well, the elves are dead, so I think that counts as a strike. Actually, they're somehow untouched, which once again concludes that Dingle wins. Bola, bola, wait! Dingle oh. cheated! What, you mean coconuts don't explode? Well, I don't know what to believe anymore! So once again, they hand victory to Santa, Dingle gets his comeuppance, and they're allowed to drop off the toys on Christmas. They even swing by the North Pole one more time. Watch this, Santa. I'm gonna kill any survivors. <laughs> the workshop is restored. Kind of wondering why they didn't just do that earlier. And they fly on. yo -ho -ho! And a bottle of... <clears throat> he means... Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night! That is, if you haven't turned off your DVD players already. We're assuming you have. Here's that picture of Santa with a machine gun again. Hey, it was cooler than anything in this! It probably goes without saying, but this is not a very good film. Its humor is either too childish for adults, too adult for children, or too stupid for both. The animation isn't that great, though weirdly I can't say it's the worst Christmas animation I've seen. And it just feels like it was written in minutes to cash in on an already fading zeitgeist. It's not the worst Christmas special, but it's so disoriented and lazily written that there's very little to get out of it. It's not the worst waste of time, but it's definitely not a fun waste of time. It's just a waste of time. And that's it for December. As well as the studio, too. I hope you guys have a really good year, and whatever changes come your way, I hope you make the best of them. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Oh, did he forget to have a December without Santa Christ? Oh, and I had a good story arc and everything. I entered a wormhole in the sky and woke up in 1961 as Bobo the Astrochimp. I had to make sure this budding astronaut made the space program, or I'd die under cruel animal testing. I had to drink caterpillar juice and crap myself and fumble through space testing and everything. But I guess that wasn't good enough for you, was it? Ho ho, I guess. Wait till Mrs. Christ hears about this. Hey look boss, I can do your mom. Hey, Doug Walker here, doing the charity shout-out. If you've been keeping up with the news, then you probably know uh, Indonesia has uh, suffered this horrible disaster. A volcano has gone off, and that causes a tsunami that has killed many, many people, and has destroyed so many homes and so many lives. Uh, so that's why this charity this week, we're doing Save the Children. This is one that we've done before. It's a very, very good one. Uh, and they don't just specialize in saving children. They specialize in saving anyone uh, in 
a disaster just like this. Uh, they go into areas that most people are running away from, and this one specifically is for this tragedy, is for the Indonesia uh, tsunami and volcano eruption. So uh, they do really amazing work, and uh, you, you can you can go to their YouTube channel and check them out. You can go to their site, but mainly just just donate. We're gonna have a link that goes directly to uh, this cause. Uh, for Save the Children, uh, because they do have one for this specifically. So, uh, please definitely go click on the link, uh, that this is a terrible thing that's happened, and around this time of year, around this holiday, we really want to show that there's people that care for them and we're willing to help. So, definitely click on the link and show your support.